Hey guys, I want to spend a few minutes talking with you about FMLS and how to do a search in FMLS. And I've already come here to the FMLS homepage at FMLS.com. Um, where you're going to want to go to do your searches is underneath products and you're going to go to matrix. That's the program we use to search the MLS database. And um, when we pull up matrix, this is what our home screen is going to look like. And you're going to have lots of different panels that are in here and you can drag and drop these and rearrange them to however you prefer them to be. Uh, you've got your market watch here with some of your quick links to see what's new on the market, what's back on the market. You have your quick search here. Um, you have the stuff about your listings and what's going on with your listings here. Um, certainly get familiar. You can play around, rearrange, do what you want to here. But the majority of the time when you're logging into FMLS, where you're going to be going is either to search or to public records. Public records is where we can access realist tax. So that's where we can go search the tax records. Uh, but if we're looking at a particular property, we can also do that through the listing for that property. So when we go under search, we have our drop down menu here where we have the option to search by residential, residential lease, residential income, land and lot, commercial sale, uh, and the like. Majority of the time, we're going to be coming in looking at residential. And when that, we click on residential, it brings us to this page where we are then going to choose whether we're looking at residential attached, residential detached, or both depending on what we're looking for. Um, and then we have all of our different search options here. The ones we're going to use more often are right here at the top in the middle. The ones we're going to use left often are down here at the bottom. So over here on the left, and we're going to just wear away from left to right. Uh, first, we're going to be looking at our status. So what are the statuses we want to look at? Do we want to look at actives? Active under contract, meaning that they've got a uh, kickout clause uh, coming soon. So let's look at our active and our coming soon. Pendings are ones that are currently under contract and not available. Uh, ones that are on hold, withdrawn, expired. And if we were doing this to look for comps for valuing a property, doing our CMAs, obviously we'd be looking at our closed. And just to show you, when we go look at closed, that will give you a timeline, zero to 180 days. But we can always pick the calendar over here and choose a different time frame. Or if we wanted to look back over the last year, we'd say we want to see stuff that is closed from zero to 365 days. Uh, typically, if we're looking at comps, I'm going to recommend you look at 270 days or less. So we're looking for active and coming soon properties. Uh, coming here to the middle, we have the option to search for a specific property or a specific address here, or if we have the FMLS number here. But more often than not, that's not how we're going to search. We're going to be searching for an area, and that area can either be defined by the map, county, the uh, FMLS area, uh, city, subdivision, zip code, or by the school system. Um, and it's pretty simple. We start typing in park view and you'll see our list is going to get really short, really fast. We can say we just want to look in park view high school. Uh, when we go look in city, we want to look in Snowville. As I type it, the city is going to pop up. So it makes that really easy. Um, and you will notice as I look at, say, Gwinnett County and I choose that down here on the bottom left, my number of matches has changed. Obviously, 2030 properties is too many to look at for a client. So I want to narrow my search down. Uh, the other way that I could also search is by the map. So if I know somebody wanted to um, move within 10 miles of their work, I can do within 10 miles of 2220. Wisteria Drive. There we go. Wisteria Drive Snowball. There you go. And that's knocked it down to a thousand matches there. Um, so I'm going to clear that map selection. I can also click on map search. So if I don't want to do a radius, 
um, I can come in here and I can zoom into my particular area that I'm wanting to look in. And let's say that I knew somebody uh, had family in Snellville and they worked in Atlanta and they wanted to be somewhere in the middle. Um, I could go in here and choose a radius and I could drop my, here's my center point and I drag it out to where I want it to be. So that would be one option for it. Um, and if I don't like that, I can just click on the circle and delete that shape. Okay. Or I can go in and use my polygon tool and I could say, well, I want to be south of 85. Every time I click, I'm able to change directions and I've got to finish where I started. But then I can say I want to include that shape or exclude that shape. Well, I'm going to include that shape. Now that I'm on my map, I need to get back to my other criteria. So I'm going to go click on criteria and that will bring me here. I can always go back to the map here. Or I can go look at all of the results. But right now I've got 410. That's uh, too many properties for me to look at. So I want to, now that I've got my area defined, I want to start using some of my other search options. And each of these categories, either price or property details, you've got little instructions here underneath the question mark. So it will tell you how to use this. So if I want to look for a property that is from 250 to 300,000, that's how I would enter that in. And you see that's dropped it down to 78 matches. I want four plus bedrooms. That's how that's going to do that. I want uh, less than an acre. I can click on my little hover over my little question mark and it will tell me uh, use 10 minus for less than 10. So I want one minus for less than one acre. And you'll see we've got zero matches now. So let's take that away. And I've got 61 no matches. Uh, da, 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 other searches. So as we get down in here, I have lots of different options of things I can look at. So I can say I only want to look at properties that have a garage. Um, I can use my and and or feature. So I want a garage and a garage door opener. And I can hit my control to choose each of those features. I'm down to 16 matches now. Um, I can say that I want a master on the main. I'm down to five matches and maybe that's the search I want. So I can click here on results or back up here. I can click on results here and that will take me over to those five properties. Well, from here, I have a lot of other options that have now opened up. Um, I can go open the individual listing up by clicking on the MLS ID number. And that will bring me in and show me anything. If I want to uh, go back to my list and not look at them individually, I just hit the agent single line display. That will bring me back to my list. Each of these categories is sortable. So if I want to sort by price, I just click on price. And that will now put that in order from lowest to, to largest. If I click on it again, it will reverse the order, put it from highest to lowest. Um, going back to uh, the individual property, I want you're going to show you where these icons are there as well, but you also have icons over here. So if I want to take a quick look, um, showing time, real list, the, the DO right here, this is whether there's documents that have been uploaded or not. So if that listing agent uploaded their seller's property disclosure or community association disclosure, that's where that's going to appear. And when I come in here, those same icons appear right here. So if I want to look at my listing history, clicking on that icon, 
it will take me over and show me all the listings that have taken place, any price changes, anything along those lines. Um, I can go through, read all my details on the property. Uh, I can select the property. Um, and when I go back to my agent single line list, you'll see that property is still selected. I can also select properties from here. Uh, getting back in here, showing you some of the other details that are here. I can go to my tax page by clicking on tax and that will bring up all my tax information here. Um, I also have the option from the listing to jump over to real list and that will take me over to their dedicated tax page um, and will provide me with much of that same information. This is where I can open this up and go look at the uh, deed book and page. I can look at the square footage that the county has, what the county knows as far as beds and baths, who the owner of record is, what the sales history is. Lots of details can be found there. Uh, heading back to Matrix, uh, I can go through here. This is where I'll find my showing instructions. Um, who the listing agent is. You'll see this one is appointment only, call listing agent, see what my selling commission is. So just encourage you guys to get in, play around with this. Um, I want to head back to my agent single line display uh, because I want you to see since I have selected these three properties, if I wanted to send those three to my client, now that they're selected, I can just come down here to email and I can put in I'm emailing three listings I can put their email address in, create whatever subject line, whatever email body. You will see I've already set up in my profile, my signature, click send, and they will get a link for them to come back and look at those three properties. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted you guys to know going back to your criteria is FNLS does not give us everything for us to search by. So if there's something that you're wanting to search by and you cannot find it in any of these boxes, that doesn't mean you can't search by it. You may come down here to the very, very bottom where it says additional fields and you can click add or remove. And you'll see examples of where I have added additional fields down here. I will go to add or remove and all of these different things are available for me to add as searchable criteria. So if I want to add something over here, I can just double click on it. It will move over to here. I can go back to my search. And then that will now appear down here as an additional search. Hope you guys find this helpful. If you need further assistance, get with Susan or I. We will certainly be uh, glad to help you. And uh, want you to uh, have a need to be searching for property on a regular basis. So good luck out there. We'll talk to you soon.